Hey you guys, so um, I wanted to come and make a, a last video before I actually leave. Um, cause I've been like having people like ask me the same question over and over again about this anyway, even though I've already done like probably five videos saying the same thing over and over again. Just in regards to what my current beliefs are. And um, as y'all know, I actually just found out from a sister she said she doesn't even watch a lot of my videos so she didn't even know what my beliefs were and I'm just kind of like I don't know how you can't see what my beliefs are when I literally probably say it in every single video it's always laced and intertwined with whatever message it is but um so I'm sorry for being repetitive but for those of you who don't know um in the beginning of uh, the summer of last year, I did have the Lord lead me into observing his laws, um, which people would, you know, call keeping the Torah. Um, and there's two different um, references to the word Torah. Torah in itself, the actual Hebrew word just means instruction. It just means uh, it's no different than any other commandment or instruction the Lord would give you in the New Testament. So the actual word Torah just means God's instruction for his people. But... Um, the actual Torah, which would be um, the Mosaic Law, or the uh, first five books of the Bible. So, that Torah is what people, um, what people initially, uh, what their minds initially go to when they hear somebody say that they keep the Torah. They, to, them, to them, that means, they think that that means that you keep all the law. And that's not biblical. Um, so... The first question that would arise is, uh, what laws, you know, are you keeping? Or that's people have been asking me, what laws do you keep? Or what laws are we supposed to be keeping for people who are interested in keeping the Torah or whatever? Um, and to be honest, you already have sound teachers um, out there. Most of them are on YouTube already, literally breaking down the word of God to you, telling you which ones you should be keeping and which, which ones you shouldn't be keeping. But it's always safe to just um, just read the Bible for yourself, even if you have to start in Genesis and read from Genesis to Revelation to know for yourself assuredly what you should and shouldn't be keeping. You do have teachers out there, and um, some teachers that I do subscribe to is 119 Ministries. They are the most beautiful. They're beautiful to me because they're really humble. I really appreciate their ministry, and um, in every video they say that even if something they say is wrong, run from it, <laughs> you know, that they're still learning themselves. But they are really scholarly, they're really studious, and um, they basically just have a teaching ministry channel on uh, the whole Word of God, and I love those brothers in Christ. They're not prideful at all. So even if they were to be in error about something, they're even telling you, you know, to email and correct them. So I think they're really, really good. Uh, another person I watch is Triumph and Truth. It's um, Pastor Gary. Yes, his name is Pastor Gary. He actually has a church congregation in his uh, his YouTube video. So it's him on a stage sitting down, like, teaching his congregation. He recently used to be in churchianity, just like all of us, <laughs> you know, pagan Christianity, until the Holy Spirit started dealing with him about how we are supposed to keep the whole word of God. And that is including... Um, the Old Testament, which has not really been done away with at all. So um, he was actually humble, which I feel like most Christians should be, especially when you're in leadership. He was humble. He left his pastoral leadership <laughs> at the church that he was in because, I mean, his beliefs changed, obviously. So he allowed the Lord to deal with him and to correct him. And now he is teaching, you know, um, scripture from more... Um, Israel Israelite Foundation. I'm going to get into that a little bit. So him, there is brother, I keep forgetting this man's name. I do this in every video. If he's not Gary. Pastor Gary is the one that looks like John Paul Jackson. Scott, yes, brother Scott from Holy Impact Ministries. He has some good videos about the Torah too. I just don't think that he's, um, I get a sense of pride with him. I feel like I don't feel the Holy Spirit when he's talking. I think he could be teaching a lot of accurate things, but I think for him, I can't say whether he's a true brother or not. I don't feel like I have a place to like, I don't have authority to like disqualify somebody's salvation, but just from what I discern about him, he's very prideful. Um, he's nowhere near as bad as the bearded people I've seen on here, but his, his spirit is just very, uh, it's not humble. I don't really get a feel that uh, Scott has an intimate relationship with the Lord. I think he has a lot of knowledge and you can learn from him knowledge wise, but uh he's even off about some stuff. But for the most part, he's a good person to learn from. 
and of course there's brother Doug Hamp. So those are currently the four people that I watch and that I'm learning from right now as I'm doing my own study as well. So my personal beliefs, um, if y'all watch any of my older videos, obviously you're not going to see me talking a lot about the tour or anything like that because I just got into it last summer. <laughs> so, but those are my current beliefs. Um, all of my older videos, there may be some Bible studies where I myself probably misunderstood Romans or misunderstood, you know, some aspects of the law. And I'm probably teaching in those videos. They're so old, I don't have time to go through them and delete them. So just know that even on my channel, there could be some... Uh, inaccurate information you know or something I just misunderstood but um currently my beliefs are that we are to keep the whole word of God and that that does include God's customs his precepts his commandments given to the Israelites in the Old Testament as far as what laws we should be keeping that I believe from what I'm learning uh, from the teachers that I am following and I follow with them scripturally as well in the Bible uh, while watching the video <clears throat> a lot of people think that um, the civil and governmental laws that the Israelites had to keep, like stoning, stoning your children, or stoning uh, people who are caught in adultery, things like that, they think that that has been done away with. And so you have those laws, and then you have the ceremonial laws that the Jews had to keep. And then, of course, the sacrificial law. <laughs> so really, you have a lot of laws in the Old Testament. Which is why I feel like New Testament Christians push the idea of keeping any part of the law away because they feel like Jesus just crucified all of it when he didn't crucify any of it, actually. Now, there are some systems that um, are not currently active because the nation of Israel are not being led by the Father right now. They're pretty much reprobate. So there's a lot of laws that aren't technically done away with, but they can't be practiced today as a nation. So we don't have to keep them. And that would be civil and governmental laws like stoning your children or um, <clears throat> stoning people who are caught in adultery or, you know, um, these things are capital punishment. So when Christians talk about this stuff, you know, they make it seem like it's just so bad, you know, that uh, thank God that he delivered us from the from the law because they used to just like, well, if it was so bad, you're basically saying that the father is bad because he's the one that ordained that law. But people will hold on a second. Yeah. One thing I was just telling a sister because me and her were kind of like uh, going back and forth about it which I was just trying to explain to her because I don't I think she she has the mindset that every Christian has when they're presented with the Torah any part of you know Christians keeping the law at all which I used to be the same way because I just genuinely I just genuinely believed it was done away with so it was just like I didn't really care to even open up my heart to learn anything further and to be honest I had a sister that came to me with that stuff last year in March and I pushed her away and I rejected it because I was just thoroughly convinced and believed that it was done away with. I thought she was getting into false doctrine and trying to keep stuff that's, you know, that's not necessary for Christians to be keeping. You can do it if you want to, but it's not serving any purpose. So she didn't even get into me. He tried to use her, but the Holy Spirit himself was the one that was leading me through different like signs and confirmations, different stuff in my books. He was the one that actually got through to me himself. So to be honest, I think for those who are truly his people, he's going to have to be the one. <laughs> Scripture says it anyway, you know, he's going to lead us and guide us into all truth. I just think he does that at different times for different believers. So you can forget about trying to literally force this down somebody's throat because if people have their minds made up about something and they have their own perspective about the laws of God or, you know, as it pertains to the Old Testament, it's just it's just a stubborn heart, basically. Um, the Holy Spirit would literally have to... Um, do his job and really get to that Christian, you know, himself. And if that's what it takes, and that's what it takes. But um, I think what people don't understand about a lot of the laws that we think are done away with, they're not done away with, and they were never really crucified in the sense of uh, the system and the government. Israel was an actual nation. So they had capital punishment laws as a nation of people. So it's kind of ridiculous to think that God's law in those aspects is uh, is done away with when it would be no different than you going to Africa. Africa has different, you know, sets of uh, capital punishment laws. Like, I think they kill homosexuals down there. They, they will imprison you for stuff like that. So I think that people are looking at it from just like a religious point. It is a, It was a religious nation. So, yes, yeah, it's, it's a re religious in that sense. But it was an actual nation. They had actual laws like capital punishment ceremonial laws you know they were their own culture 
So it's not that any of these laws were done away with. It's that a lot of them can't be practiced as a nation today because the nation of Israel, they're all reprobate. So uh, hypothetically, basically, for us Christians, if, if Israel were still a nation today that were actually submitted to God, submitted to the spirit of God, which for them to do that, they would have to believe the gospel. They don't. So that's why a lot of these laws can't be practiced today. But if they were hypothetically, and let's say that we as believers got converted into the faith through Jesus Christ, you know, and we're here to keep God's precepts and keep his commandments. Let's say hypothetically the father led us to go to the nation of Israel because they're, they're the only nation that God knows <laughs> that knows God. All the other nations are pagan nations, to be honest with you. America, that's Babylon. That's not your home. You were raised here, you know, I'm going to get into that in a few minutes, but let's just say hypothetically we, we went there, converted to Christianity, went to the nation of Israel. We have our own government. We're our own nation. We're our own people. You know, we're a royal priesthood. We have our own capital punishment laws. Those things would still be taking place there. So I think people, they don't think about that when they hear, you know, um, that God's laws, you know, they haven't been done away with. They just think that, uh, you know, if Christians were to do that today, in America, you know, that can't possibly be God. The old law is done away with, you know, like that. You can't do it because America is not an Israelite nation. <laughs> so you can't do it here. We already have our own capital punishment laws. But um, if Israel were actually believing in the gospel and believing in Jesus and we were to convert into Christianity and the Father allowed us to go there and to become that nation, although we have a whole bunch of other pagan nations surrounding us, which would be America and every every other place, that stuff would still be going on. So there's a lot of laws in the Old Testament that it hasn't been done away with, but it can't be practiced biblically because that system and priesthood is not active right now. It can't be. They're reprobate. They don't believe in Jesus. They rejected the Messiah. They rejected the law of the prophets. So it hasn't been done away with. It's just inactive. <laughs> so um, that's really all that is. And um, that just leads into my next point, which is uh, my beliefs. Um, I believe what the Bible teaches, which a lot of people don't know what the Bible teaches, so that's the main issue here. <laughs> so, uh, Christians have been engrafted into Israel's promise and um, covenant with the Lord. So, it's not a situation where you take your upbringing, your personal pagan, you know, background, being born in America, wherever you're from, and then you become a Christian and you try to change Christianity or stay the way that you are, you need to understand that Jesus, his foundation was the law. He lived it. He taught it. He never taught against it. He re-emphasized it and probably even made it a little bit more tighter than what you were probably used to. So he was never anti, you know, Mosaic law. He never was. So, um, us, um, you know, becoming a part of the body of Christ who literally said that he does what he sees the father doing he speaks what he hears the father speaking the father is not double-minded he's not schizophrenic his word is not changed i believe that we should walk as jesus walked and we should uh, obey his commandments and do the things that he did and keep the precepts that he kept and customs which customs is just synonymous with culture they have their own culture they have their own set of beliefs you can't say that you're a christian but then you reject something like that that's what a christian is it's Judaism who have who finally got their Messiah. It just so happens they rejected their Messiah. So we believe in their Messiah. We're engrafted into their beliefs. We're engrafted into their culture. We're engrafted into their customs. <clears throat> so there's no confusion with that. I think the main confusion just lies with people not knowing which laws are to be kept today as a Christian or uh, which laws, you know, cannot be kept, cannot be kept today. And that would be most of the ceremonial laws and uh, sacrificial laws. Jesus was our sacrifice, so we don't have to do those things anymore. And of course, um, like I said, capital punishment can't be done. So our situation actually becoming a part of the body of Christ as Gentiles, people who are not, you know, of uh, Israelite descent, but you are in the body of Christ now. We, we do, you know, we are scattered throughout the entire earth. There's some of us in America, some of us in China, some of us, you know, in India. So you have Christians all over the place. So what is our responsibility, not geographically being in the nation of Israel itself, reading the Bible, 
Serving that same God, how do we actually obey him? You do exactly what everybody else did in the Bible who were scattered off and exiled into other Babylonian nations, <laughs> you know? You obey God to the best of your ability. You maintain uh, your set of beliefs. You maintain your culture as a people despite where you are. So Christians